BambuLab did it again. The P1P is a lower cost printer in their lineup made to stir up the market. How reduced is the experience in comparison to the X1 series? Is there any impact at the performance? How much do it yourself and self-expression is really possible? And is there still any reason left to choose a Peugeot i3 printer? Bring it on! This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay offers a wide range of services like 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding and of course PCB production. And oh, have you seen the 2022 big Christmas sale on PCBWay.com? There has never been a better time to go the PCBWay for prototyping. For a limited time you get big discounts for various products and services. Don't miss that! Check out PCBWay.com, link in the video description. Over the last decade, Joseph Prusa was greatly influencing and improving the maker community, the FDM and even the SLA market. Whenever asked, my recommendation to anyone who wanted an easy start into 3D printing was, go for Prusa. It's not the cheapest, but it's the best overall experience for a hassle-free start. This year Bamboo Lab literally changed everything with the X1 and the X1 Carbon. Clever DJI engineers finally brought FDM high-tech to the masses at reasonable prices for what you get. The resulting hype was overwhelming for everyone who is interested in 3D printing and who might have an internet connection. Over around 10 years, Prusa profited from slow but steady progress in RepRep with tailoring regular product evolutions for his loyal fans. Latest and most appreciated example, the Prusa Mark 3S Plus, which I built from a kit and which I used with a lot of joy for the last two years. Now there is Bamboo Lab, about to change everything. Ultra professional, mass produced, high end products. And now with a lower cost version of the X1 series the stripped down P1P. Let's check out if it's worth the still high price tag and if there's still a reason left to go for a Prusa Mark III. Bamboo Lab provided the review unit for this video. Thank you. Bamboo Lab has a very strict review policy, which means there is none. I am 100% free to express my own opinion. And as you know, I am not shy to do so. Bamboo Lab states net prices, excluding VAT on their shop. Here in Germany, we have 19% VAT and shops of all kinds usually state gross prices for end consumers. So I compare gross prices instead of net prices here. The P1P is 784 euros here in Germany. That's 333 euros less than the X1 series and that's 65 euros less than the Prusa Mark III kit. In comparison to the regular X1, so the non-carbon X1, the P1P lacks the enclosure and the LED lighting for the build space by default. The smartphone-like touchscreen of the X1 series is replaced by a simpler and cheaper monochrome LCD display with a directional pad. I'm not a big fan of the controls and responsivity, but it does the job without being really annoying. The maximum bed temperature is only 100 degrees Celsius, even though it comes with exactly the same hardware, at least at first glance. According to Bamboo Lab, the hardware of the bed is lower specified and therefore a bit cheaper to offer. In my review unit, I was able to go up to 120 degrees Celsius, as it was not software limited before the latest firmware upgrade, but I can't tell if it was a good idea for long term use. Also, the support of the set lead screws at the tops are now bushings instead of the deep groove ball bearings. Just like the regular X1, the P1P also lacks the X1 carbon features, such as the camera for the build space, the auxiliary part cooling fan, the fan and temperature sensor for the chamber temperature regulation, the activated carbon filter and the hardened steel hotend as well as the hardened steel extruder gears. The toolhead including the drag chain and filament guiding is also proprietary for the P1P. More details on this topic later because this is quite restrictive for upgrading the P1P. This also counts for the microlighter of the X1 series as it's not existent on the P1P. Do I really miss it? You'll see. Concerning multicolor and multi-material printing, the automated material system AMS is also supported by the P1P and it works well, even though display controls were not 100% implemented at the time testing. Nevertheless, I can't imagine that filament handling and definition can be done conveniently on the P1P. Most of this might be done over Wi-Fi with bamboo slicer. For me, as a mechanical engineer, one of the absolute highlights of the X1 series is the motion system, including Bamboo Lab's approach concerning resonance compensation following traditional discrete control theory. 
The mechanics and the whole motion system is exactly the same on the P1P as on the X1 or X1 Carbon. Therefore, Bevo Lab marketing states the same 500 mm per second at up to 20k mm per second square acceleration for printing. Yup, I have checked that out. You will see. Prusa's Mark III S Plus as a kit for 849 euros or fully assembled for 1159 euros has a tough time concerning specs, features and concerning prices in comparison. So the question of this video is answered. Bamboo Lab is the clear winner, right? Be advised and don't be hasty on this conclusion. But first, let's check the capabilities of the Bamboo Lab P1P in comparison to its contenders. For the print time comparison, I widened the field of printers and models since the last video. We have the P1P, the X1 Carbon, the Prusa Mark III S Plus, the FL Sun V400, my LEO Voron 2.4-300 and also the brand new BQ Huracan, which comes with Clipper firmware out of the box. Just like the V400. I used the default factory slicer settings for all printers except for the BQ Huracan and the Voron 2.4. The official Huracan factory defaults are not included yet in Cura, but this will happen in the next releases. The good news, these settings are based on my how fast is Clipper really video and they work very well on the Huracan. So the results for the Huracan are mainly based on its future factory defaults. In the last video I showed and used optimized settings for my Voron 2.4-300, which worked very well for the last weeks of printing and they are used here also. For printing the models, I only varied layer height, wall count, sparse infill percentage, as well as the number of top and bottom layers. For this video, I added the neat Imperial Dragon by Flexi Factory, printing on everyone's new silk rainbow filaments. If you like to support 24 7 printing and if you like saving money, please check out the link in the description in order to buy everyone products. After long nights of hard negotiations with everyone, you get a blazing 20% discounts for all of their products with the code 247 printing at checkout. The Flexi Dragon is a perfect print farm example, as there is a lot of business going on with printed dragons on Etsy, for example. In addition to that, the Prusa Mark III is the perfect example for a reliable farm printer with good customer support. Though it needs almost one full day to finish one of those dragons. With a BQ Huracan, running on Clipper, being input shaped and with some additional tweaking of the settings, you could double this throughput at the same print quality. The Voron and Bamboo Lab printers are noticeably faster and come close to triple the throughput concerning the Dragon. So the big leap in print time can already be achieved on lower end Batslingers with Clipper installed and with resonance compensation activated. The FL Sun V400 is still the fastest printer in the field, but as addressed in my last video, it lacks fine details on the prints because of smoothing. Concerning print quality in general, the print quality for the stated print times is at a comparable level between all printers. And why is the P1P is lower than the X1 Carbon? All prints were done in PLA, which is most demanding concerning part cooling. The auto cooling default settings for the P1P take into account that there is no auxiliary fan like on the X1 Carbon, meaning slowdowns in order to not overheat the layers. Adding the auxiliary fan on the P1P and adjusting the auto cooling settings to X1 carbon values would equalize the print times. Is it worth it to buy the auxiliary part cooling fan for the P1P or the regular X1? If you print a lot of small stuff with fast layer times and maybe also extreme overhangs, go for it, as it's only around 30 bucks and it's a quite easy to do upgrade. Concerning the Bamboo Lab marketing of the print speeds of the P1P, yes, you can somehow print at 20k mm per second square and 500 mm per second, so it's absolutely not wrong to state that, even though not a single setting in the slicer is at 500 mm per second at standard speed mode. Yes, you'll also have those speed modes on the P1P. Now that you only need a fraction of time in order to print your models with bamboo or clipper printers, what about the effects on energy consumption? Check out my video on energy saving in 3D printing, where I also included fast printers like the X1 Carbon and the Retric V Core 3. For my Deutsch viewers, check out the video by MPOX.de, who explains the energy saving topic more at a beginner level and in German. Short note to the material capabilities of the P1P, to some extent you can print ABS or ASA on the P1P, but be aware that bigger and or more complex parts might have warping and or curling issues. For example, I failed to print the external fan support from ASA on the P1P, you'd need an enclosed build space for this. On the other hand, I didn't have any problems to print spare Warren 0.1 parts from ABS Plus, as they are flat and small. 
Consider the stock P1P mainly as a PLA, PTG and TPU machine. The enclosure of the X1 and the X1 Carbon is an enabler for engineering grade materials, but also helps for noise as long as the chamber fan is off. The P1P is quite a bit louder than the X1 series, but in the end that doesn't really matter. After doing quite a lot of printing with each series in my office, both are too loud to have them in the same room all day long trying to work concentrated. Now that the P1P is kind of a bare bone in comparison to the X1 series, how much freedom of modding and for self-expression do you have with it? The pre-orders receive an upgrade kit with the auxiliary fan, P1P specific LED lighting and a P1P specific 720p low frame rate camera which is overall lower spec than the X1 series camera. It still does the job of checking the printing progress, but it's not as much joy to watch the printing as on the X1 series. An upgrade to the X1 camera is not possible due to interfacings and due to the lack of processing power. Except for the external part cooling device which connects directly to the mainboard, these upgrades connect to a breakout board right behind the display. These interfaces are also intended to connect future official and user-based modifications for the P1P. An interesting input-output device, for example, which has already been teased by Bamboo Lab, arrives early next year. There is a 5V 1.5A USB-A connector to be able to power add-ons to your liking. Prices for the official Bamboo Lab upgrades are mostly not known yet. Expect them to be reasonable, like all the accessories offered at the Bamboo Lab online store. And here comes the biggest bummer for the P1P in my opinion. For maximum differentiation to the X1 series, there won't be an easy or intended way to step-by-step -step upgrade the P1P to a fully featured X1 or X1 Carbon. That's mainly because of restrictive limitations. The toolhead including all PCBAs and interfaces as well as the front cover are proprietary for the P1P. Electronical parts for the toolhead like temperature sensor, heater, extruder, the fans or hot and assemblies are not interchangeable between P1P series and the X1 series. At least for now. What a pity for users already owning quite a lot of spares for the X1 series. Same topic for the microlighter. Don't expect an option for this on the P1P. Because of the proprietary PCBAs and the mainboard is also proprietary. Concerning the lack of the microlighter, there will be a manual way to determine the K-values for flow calibration aka linear advance. Just like on Marlin, but it's not available yet. And I personally don't really mind here. After printing a range of different materials and filaments on the P1P and lacking a way to do the flow calibration, I didn't really miss it. The default value worked fine for the wide range of prints I made. Also for bed leveling, I didn't realize any trade-off yet on the P1P without the microlighter in comparison to my X1 carbons. So is the microlighter just a useless show-off gimmick? Not entirely, as it might provide that last bit of safety for print quality and for the bed leveling. The stripped down system is also the reason why you can't use the X1 touchscreen for the P1P. No official upgrade possible, the P1P specific mainboard has varying connectors for display and toolhead. So it's a determining choice between P1P series and X1 series concerning a lot of features. Nevertheless, a barebone like the P1P gives you plenty of opportunities for some creative self-expression, right? Yes, and that's kind of cool. The frame is the same sheet metal design as on the X1 series and comes with the same interfacings. Bamboo Lab already released some neat predefined designs ready to be printed and I also got this 24 7 printing skin pre-made by Bamboo Lab. You can expect a lot of community and third party designs concerning skins and even full enclosure should be possible with some tinkering. Do it yourself and tinkering has its limits on the P1P though. We don't have access to any firmware settings, so don't expect an easy way to use electronic accessory from third party manufacturers. The P1P has its strictly defined limits concerning do it yourself and upgrading, because the most important PCBAs are P1P specific. Keep that in mind before buying. Now let's answer that clickbait question of this video. Is there still any reason left to go for a Prusa Mark III printer? Technically and concerning the hard facts, the answer is an absolute no-brainer. Spec-wise and feature-wise, there is no reason to choose a Mark III S Plus as a kit or as a ready-built printer over on P1P or even an X1. In the end, print quality of both the Bamboo Lab printers and the Prusa are absolutely comparable, but the Bamboo printers are between two and three times faster. 
Ready Build, the MK3S Plus, costs 1,159 euros, which is 375 euros more than a P1P. That's the price level of a Bamboo Lab X1, which is way ahead of the MK3S Plus. So concerning the hard facts, meaning price and features, the real contender for the P1P is the Mark 3S Plus kit, which still is around 6 euros more than the P1P and it takes 8 to 12 hours to build. Which was, at least in my case, a lot of fun and a great experience together with my better half. She and even I learned a lot. And this brings us to some soft facts, which might still speak for a Prusa Mark 3S Plus. With a P1P, you're still kind of limited, as you won't have the experience of building a printer from zero. And you won't really have that generic rap rap do it yourself or open source experience with any Bamboo Lab printer. But what is the future of FDM printing for the masses and the mainstream? Is do-it-yourself or even FDM the core of future 3D printing anyways? Will the incoming mainstream users really care for rap rap do-it-yourself or open source? As a tinkerer and a happy iPhone user at the same time, I have my doubts. Most of the future mainstream consumers just want a tool with a bit of personalization for Instagram photos, right? So building a printer by yourself is a great learning opportunity and probably a start for more concerning making. If you want to learn 3D printing, go for a Prusa or some other do-it-yourself kit like from Redrick or Voron and build your own great printer. If you just want to use 3D printing, go for any Bamboo Lab printer which fits your needs. Full recommendation from my side, as there is hardly any alternative option on the market right now, concerning features, concerning performance and concerning the price tag. With that being said, thanks a lot for watching. Also, happy holidays and a great new year. See you on the next one. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, leave a like and write a comment. I am always curious to know your thoughts. So, sorge mal, wo ist jetzt mein Weihnachtsschnaps? But first, let's check the capabilities of the Pembo Lab. Pembo. <laughs> Pampers Lab. What about Pampers Lab?